Hello, everyone. Um, I was counting slides earlier, and uh, Sharab, you had like 10 slides. I was told five slides. Where's Jared? Jared? Jared, are you here? Anyway, Brianne, you had one slide, so I don't know. Anyway, so I did this in five slides. So designers, this is tough to do in five slides, because we like to design stuff. Uh, my name is Ian Chalmers. I'm from Pivot Design Group. And uh, wow, uh, it's great to be on the receiving end of this. Uh, we run an event, I'm going to plug my event, no I'm not, uh, called Design Meets. And if anyone's been to it before, we've done this since 2010, and we ask people to do five minutes. And I'm like, wow, that's, it's a good idea, right? But no, when you're a presenter, it's actually really tough to fit everything into five minutes. I'm going to take my time. Anyway, Pivot Design, we are, we are not a, looks like a hand modeling company. Uh, <laughs> But uh, designers, uh, designers love to show pictures of them doing things creative. And um, it's true, because we don't want to show ourselves, we want to show the process, right? So Pivot's a, a user experience, user-centered design company that works primarily in healthcare. So we are all design people, design thinkers, design researchers, who look at problems in a way that's quite unique uh, when we work with, let's say, a research a researcher, a uh, pharmacist, a physician, uh, or an institution. So we apply our process, which is, uh, I'll show you in a second, which is very, it's kind of slow in a way, but it helps us kind of bake and reduce, boil a problem down to a perfect place that makes it actually meaningful for users. Uh, these are just some of our wonderful uh, clients. It's hard to see that, it's a little faded. and. Um, and the process is nothing too uh, original. I've uh, been doing this since 1998. And um, my favorite place is discovery. And that's where we get to sort of really understand a problem. And what that means is, um, you know, why are we doing this? What is the, what is the reason we're doing this? Uh, why are you so passionate? What's your vision? What do, we, what do we need to know about your audience? Like, who are the users? Can we talk to the users? Can we watch the users? Can we see them doing the thing that we think they're going to do when we build your product? So all of this qual qualitative sort of research goes into what we call design evidence, trademark. Uh, this is something that we uh, are very proud of. That's why we trademarked it. And um, we take that as our kind of design brief, kind of the foundation to move forward to kind of design. The design process, which we love, equally to the discovery process, is where sort of you start to th come up with all the ideas of, how do we make this? What should it be? Uh, based on the users, how do we fit this again? How do we synthesize the learnings, the evidence, into something that is meaningful? And a lot of this is black and white. It's paper. It's uh, electronic prototypes. And it's a lot of iteration. And you've probably heard some of this before, and I'm sure many of you have hopefully taken this process, and a lot of testing. After that, of course, we love the word activate. It's very popular tonight. Um, as is, I didn't use innovation, huh? No innovation word. Uh, I think it might be on another slide. Uh, but activation is very important too. How do we actually build it? What's the right way to implement it? Uh, how do you take it to market? So I'm gonna show you uh, three projects. This is with Toronto Rehab, uh, working with Dr. Mark Bailey out of Toronto Rehab and uh, Steve Wolf out of Emory University. Two years ago, we started this with a small budget and we built a very basic prototype. And it was about upper arm recovery uh, for stroke, post-stroke upper arm recovery therapies for OTs and PTs. And the idea here was Mark wanted to put the best evidence in the hands of, of PTs when they're making decisions about what is the right treatment at the right stage of a patient in their recovery. And this has now gone worldwide. We built it um, responsively, so it's not terribly nice to look at on a large screen, but when you bring it down responsively to a smartphone, it's perfect. On Monday, we're going to launch this as an iPhone and an Android application, so there'll be a press release. Hopefully, the Apple Store will actually release it. Uh, anyone know about that experience? And uh, we love this project. It has real meaning. Um, anyone heard of this? This has been around for a while. I'm proud to be part of this team. Uh, CloudDX was the only Canadian company to make it into the, the finals at uh, the Qualcomm Tricorder X Prize. And there were 330 teams globally, 10 made it through, 7 made it through, and now only 2 have made it through. Unfortunately, the Canadian firm didn't make it to the $10 million prize, but uh, 30, 20 of us are going to LA next week 
for the actual announcement, probably the check, there'll be big checks, right, for $10 million. But we're hoping to receive something, something to the nature of, you guys have proven diagnostics can be done in a way that is personal and, you know, close to, I, you know, I didn't get into actually the, how much time do I have? 15 seconds. Okay. <laughs> Self-management diagnostic tool. 16 conditions. Monitor five vitals over 72 hours. It's, this is the future in a sense. This is not ready for market, but it's brilliant, right? It's pushing, pushing, pushing. Uh, last project. This is another one we're quite proud of. This launched a few weeks, uh, a few weeks ago. This is a service design project. And uh, the Toronto Academic Pain Management uh, Medicine Institute is made up of Women's College Hospital, um, Mount Sinai, St. Mike's, and CAMH, and Mount Sinai Wasser Pain Clinic. And this is about creating a single door for all the chronic pain management referrals that come through. The challenge today is someone gets a referral, they have to go through Mount Sinai, it's 15 pages, they have to wait up to three to six months to actually see a pain specialist. And um, although we know this and they knew this, they needed to see it documented. So what we did is we interviewed 20 patients, physicians, uh, healthcare uh, practitioners and family members, and we created a, a patient experience map. This is called a service blueprint in the top left. And what this did is it helped them see that people were not being taken care of while they were waiting for chronic pain treatment. And there was a huge gap, no expectations were being managed, there was no communications. So what they did is they wanted to create the first phase, which is this front door uh, for patients and for doctors, a single referral form at this site. So this is a huge, huge step for chronic pain management online. We talk about virtual care, this is not really virtual. You still have to download a PDF, but this is a big baby step to kind of get to the right place. Phase two of this looks quite amazing. So. Kudos to these guys for, um, for pushing things. Anyway, there's so much more, but uh, that's it. Uh, thanks for the ramblings. That's the... Yeah.